When Porsche revealed their first all-electric car, they claimed it would eclipse all others. A bold, yes, important claim for the proud performance car maker. And the key stratagem they deployed to achieve their bold claim? A searingly high 800 volt power supply and, you may recall from school, voltage is equal to pressure, which leads to more power using less current. Add to this Porsche's unrivaled sports car know-how plus its impressive build quality and what we have here is special. What we have here is the Taycan. And where is here one might ask? Well, where else but that most agreeable of all dealerships, Porsche Centre Chester. Le Mans, you know, that 24 hour race. That's where Porsche developed their 800 volt power pack for their victorious 919 race car. And no other car maker then or now is offering this system. We're gonna talk more about this technology later. For now, let's just jump straight into this future world car. We have to wait just one, maybe two seconds while our Taycan recognises that the person walking up to it holds the key. Doors unlock, lights come on, we sit down, we tap the knurled metal gear selector into drive and we can move right off. No turning on ignition, no starting an engine and even no clicking off the handbrake. Just walk up to it, open the door, sit down and go. Taycan hums, just enough to let you know it's alive. Then squeeze the throttle and off you ooze along with a noise like some sort of sci-fi monorail. Press harder and the spooky hum increases while we are launched forward with a seamless urge. It's just one minute in and I'm completely engaged with this experience. Time I think we should stand back and look again at this all new thing. Clearly, there's no engineering evolution going on here. This is a brand new clean sheet design, close and true to Porsche's original and startling Mission E concept, an all-electric concept car which raised eyebrows just a few years ago. Porsche showed the world in a unique styling exercise for a high-performance, low-slung body being narrow of canopy and wide of hip. And true to the concept and their word, we are given a futuristic and handsome car, more a stretch 911 than a shrunken Panamera. And here today, in our 4S car, in gentian blue contrasted with chocolate leather-free interior, we have a sophisticated style, which is a little more subtle than the attention-grabbing all-white launch spec cars. These Taycans, they sit low, they look purposeful, a bit like a 911. While ingress and egress is slightly compromised for a car of this type by the larger than usual B pillar, once inside the forms and surfaces lift the style stakes to another level where we find high gloss panels and touch sensitive controls and clickable switching areas. We find an array of gorgeously vivid infotainment screens, elegantly designed and crafted seats and a steering wheel vying for attention with the futuristic console and dash. The main dials are displayed on a cow-free 17-inch curved digital screen with more touch controls for things like the lights and dampers along the edge of the screen. The main infotainment screen is wide, measuring 10.9 inches, and there's an optional extra display so you can get the front seat passenger to program the sat nav or choose which music to play. So, well, yeah, there's no argument going to be there, is there? This means there's a door-to-door -door swathe of displays, which looks really cool. This cabin, this cabin is beautiful and it's seemingly reached the highest level of car industry tech to date. And once you become accustomed to this futuristic sci-fi movie setup, there'll be no turning back. So it's just a 
few miles in and it feels like we have a cross here between a 911 and a Panamera. There's the low set driving position sitting there in side hugging sport seats and the view out over those familiar Porsche raised wings helps you place the nose precisely where you want it. And like all Porsche sports cars, the tyres bite hard into the road surface and never threaten to let go, allowing you to simply flick your wrists to jink the car left and right with absolute precision. Then there's a huge amount of grunt and grip when powering out of corners, the powerful brakes and of course the sheer turn of speed on offer. This is pure, undiluted Porsche driving dynamics. This guys, this is the future. And Porsche continuously has his eyes on the future, which is why they leaped ahead of the game with that 800 volt power system. You see, by increasing the voltage, you lower the current, meaning thinner cables, which in this case shaves about four kilograms off the loon. However, most importantly, it enables much faster charging times and more efficiency in getting all that energy into the drive motors. It's also capable of taking the fastest charged input of any AV out there from one of Porsche's 270 kilowatt charger points. All that energy powers two electric motors, there's one on each axle, meaning it's all wheel drive of course, or they call it permanently excited. This is what the brochure says. And finally, the Taycan drive system features a unique two-speed transmission leading to improved efficiency while cruising and huge acceleration off the line. Huge effortless linear acceleration and speed we're actually getting drunk on here speed well it's speed i really need to try and show you the whirring power on sound is almost spooky yet the spookiest feeling of all is the car's unusually low center of gravity you're aware of the weight as you turn into a corner and expect it to roll but then it turns in neatly grips hard and retains a flat body throughout it really shouldn't corner like this it also shouldn't stop half as well as it does a rolling mass of 2.3 tons should feel like it needs a whole ton of space to break but the Taycan manages the shed speed in barely a moment and usually does so without even needing to employ the mechanical brakes as the electricity regeneration setup handles most of the stopping while it's putting some charge back into the battery. You have to brake really quite hard before the surface coated discs take over. Porsche has actually dated the service life of the brakes saying they need changing every six years, suggesting you could go all that time without wearing them out. So are there any downsides with the Taycan? Well, for me, I lament the loss of physical buttons for climate control and other frequently used functions like the radio, etc. And that 270 kilowatt charging is only currently possible at just a couple of 800 volt stations in the UK, although of course there are plans for more. Owners will likely simply fit a 7.2 kilowatt charger at home or increase the house supply to accommodate an 11 kilowatt hour charger, meaning you could then fully juice up an empty battery in about nine hours. So not too many downsides with the Taycan itself. Only the significant downsides remain with the Apache electricity supply infrastructure. Combined with the Taycan's pretty low range, it seems to be about 220 miles. Upsides, of course, are that Porsche is way ahead of the game here in an instant. I love the electric whirring power on sound made especially urgent when in Sport Plus mode. I like the noticeable shift in drive between launch off and first gear and then on into second gear at greater speed. I love Taycan's futurism and luxury and that Taycan's speed is delivered in a remarkable and incredible way. And I guess even more incredible is the fact that the all-electric battery-powered Taycan feels unmistakably like a Porsche. The Taycan is without doubt an amazing technical achievement. It's a Porsche that does all the enjoyable things like braking and cornering with remarkable capability. And while the sound of electric propulsion feels robotic compared to a living breathing petrol engine the Taycan with its combination of brutal performance and fine handling has moved the game on considerably by adding charisma 
into the mix. And with petrol engine cars becoming increasingly sanitised by particulate filters and turbos, the gap between EVs and the performance car is narrowing by the month and it seems to me that gap has just been narrowed further still by the extraordinary Porsche Taycan. So thank you again for watching, I hope you've liked this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and comments are always welcomed, I read every single one and I'll reply to most and if you haven't already please think about subscribing and if you hit this little notification bell, I'll send you another video.